We met in 2008 in college swim team practice. It was love at first, Speedo. We've been together pretty much ever since. I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to meet, they settle down beneath my feet. Our first vehicle was a 1985 Volkswagen Vanagon Westphalia with pop top, naturally. We're kind of hopeless romantics uh, when it comes to vehicles. The plan was to just travel and see what we wanted to see, and then we thought we would just settle down somewhere. And we thought that while we were traveling, we'd figure out where that place was. And through the course of that, we realized that it wasn't necessarily one place. It was just that we wanted to tr keep traveling. and so. As soon as that trip ended, shortly thereafter, we started hatching a plan to do it again, but do it while working so that we could continue to travel as long as we wanted to. It was a have your cake and eat it too kind of situation. We wanted to be able to live the way that we wanted, but also still have the careers that we wanted to. And um, we were very blindly faithful to that idea. And luckily it has paid off. <laughs> So while we were transitioning into a freelance career, we were also spending every weekend um, breathing a new life into a vehicle that was bone stock. It broke down often. Eventually that just became more of a hindrance than uh, we were willing to have. We made the tough decision, cut our losses and sold it. Then we moved on, we found a new vehicle. It was a big project, but we thought it'd be a great opportunity to learn and grow and have something unique and fun. That was a 1985 4x4 Toyota Sun Raider. We took it all the way down to the fiberglass. It really needed some updating from a living standpoint to make like modern life on the road and work. We thought that that project would take two months. It took nine months and was extremely educational and draining and frustrating and rewarding. And it's just like the full spectrum, I feel like over the experience. I think that over the course maybe of those nine months, our goals might have come into focus a little bit more. So when the build was done uh, and we finally left in it. It was roughly three weeks before we decided that it was not the right vehicle for us. It was top heavy being that it was only a four cylinder, 18 foot camper. We were pretty slow. It was to the point where we felt like we were causing danger on the road. After we realized that the Sun Raider was not going to work out, and we just like for so long had put mentally all of our eggs in that basket and spent so much time on it. So it was really quite a profound shock to come to the realization that it wasn't going to work out for us. So our first two vehicles uh, bred a lot of insecurities, I would say, and trust issues that we had in our vehicle. And those are very toxic feelings to have. When you set up your life to be on the road, you want to be on the road. You don't want to be like held back by anything. And this is the first vehicle that I would say that we have where it's like, we're the focus. What we're doing is the focus and not the vehicle. I have a newfound confidence that wherever we're going to be, we're going to make it and we're going to be comfortable and we can continue living our lives just the way we want to. Hi, my name is Mac. And I'm Owen. And we're bound for nowhere. And this is our truck, Roxy. Roxy is a 2019 Toyota Tundra SR5 4x4. However, we have added a rear differential locker. This is a flatbed four-wheel camper, and it is the Hawk, which is just the name of the particular size. It's for the smaller of the full-size trucks. We have a high clearance steel front bumper with integrated winch and light bar. Uh, and we have amber and white lights. Amber is nice because it doesn't kind of ruin your night vision quite as much. Uh, and then up here we have a snorkel, which just moves our air intake up to be a lot higher. Because we spend a lot of time in the desert, just kind of gets cleaner air into our engine rather than closer to the ground where it's super dusty. Uh, we have a double cab truck. This is actually the smallest um, wheelbase that you can get with a standard bed. We would have preferred a single cab just to make ourselves even smaller if we could, but it's ended up being nice because this is the cat seat. She thinks that the whole back seat is hers. So anytime we have passengers back here, she's like, what are you, what are you doing? This is mine. 
Up above our door, side door entry into our camper, we have an eight foot Fiamma awning. It's great, I personally like to work outside, so it provides great shade, and it also keeps the inside of the camper cooler when it is out. This is a bug light, which is really nice. You can turn it on, it's an amber light, doesn't attract any bugs, and then that is just like a side. LED light, I don't think we've ever used it. Uh, in here we have our air compressor, which gives our rear locker its power because it's an air locker. Um, it's also great because we have the ability to air down or air back up uh, in the rougher off-road conditions that we sometimes come across. So we have Evo Course wheels and BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires. They are bigger, uh, they're 35s. And that is Luna, our cat. Um, she's been traveling with us since February, though we've had her for about nine years. So she is new to the road, but is taking to it like a fish in water. This is the step that takes us up into our camper. It's super low profile. We love it because it's easily detachable. Just toss it in the door when we're driving. Easy to pop back in when it's time to go. And it looks like a gigantic bottle opener. We have a flatbed four-wheel camper. Um, the great thing about a flatbed is we get a ton more storage space in our camper. The reason why we got this particular flatbed is that we love that our wheel wells is, they're built back up by storage containers. And so this is kind of our garage type stuff. And in this one, we have, we keep our, our chairs. We have a blanket, a, I don't know part of a sleeping pad, which can be used as a chair. This is a single burner stove because we have the ability to cook outside, um, hook to our propane tanks, our poop shovel, and our cat's lead. <laughs> um, all, li all live in this small container. And the great thing is these are water, I wouldn't say watertight, but they are water resistant and they lock. So all of this stuff is super safe in here. This is our propane tank storage container. We have two 10 pound tanks. Only one is ever in use at any time. Moving right along to the back of our camper, we have two jerry cans on the outside. Uh, they're five gallons each, 10 gallons total, which actually gets us an additional range of about 100 miles. Two max tracks or sand ladders. These are in case you get stuck in the sand or mud. Jam them under the tires and you can usually climb your way out. It does have a tow package, which gets us a 38 gallon tank of gas, which is amazing. We did get to keep when our flatbed got removed, we were able to keep our backup camera, which is nice with the build like this because our rear view mirror is useless. So it's nice to be able to see something and it's always dirty and always hard to see out of. <laughs> we have a full size spare under here and all of our lighting back here is also LEDs. And we also have some exterior floodlights back here, which we've only had to use a couple of times. This is kind of the utility side of the camper. Uh, we almost never take pictures of this side for this reason. So we have a portable solar panel hookup here, which we currently have hooked up. We have an auxiliary water tank, which we have purposed as our gray water tank. So we run a hose from our sink over here. All of our gray water ends up in this tank so it can be dumped accordingly. This is an exterior shower hookup and we do have a hot water heater so hot or cold water you can shower here we have like a little nozzle that we can hook up and then we also have an interior shower uh, and this is where it drains so it can be easily routed into the gray water tank. We have 320 watts of solar on our roof at all times that's always out but we also have this 120 watt portable panel, which is really great. It folds up like a little suitcase. It's easy to stash in the back seat, but it's nice because we can move it around with the sun to always get at least one panel with optimal lighting at all times. It's called the bug out panel and it is a game changer. It is the most efficient solar panel we have ever used and we have gone through a lot of them. Welcome to the inside of our home. Another reason why we love the flatbed is this footprint and like the layout of everything it kind of feels like everything has its own space like this is the kitchen this is the bed that is the workspace and we've kind of found with slide-in truck campers they're all galley style and kind of lose that segmented space and I feel like segmented space kind of gives the illusion of more space <laughs> so which is always nice when you're living out of a car this is the forward facing portion of the camper so this is our bed it is queen size bed and it's great. It can actually expand even further 
This pulls out and there's cushions that go in here. We're small people and don't need that. So we actually don't even carry those cushions. So in addition to this being our bed, it is also, sorry, Luna, is where we store. So these are all of my clothes, Owen's clothes, linens on the far side. This little mechanism actually helps us pop the top because typically to pop the top, you need to be like on the outside edges. But since the bed is here, you can't really get there. You actually press this little bar back. And once the top is up, it's kind of not useful anymore. So it just snaps up and out of the way. Over the bed, we have a push-pull uh, Dometic fan, three speeds, and we also have one in the back of the camper. So between the push-pull, we can actually get some circulation going and it's very effective, I would say. So over here is one of our sets of cabinets. Uh, this is our produce bag. This is our battery compartment. I will say that our battery system is a little bit different than what comes with a four wheel camper. We have swapped our batteries out for a lithium setup. They typically come with AGM and we have installed an inverter. So we have two 100 amp hour lithium batteries and an inverter in here. Of everything that we have that requires power um, on the road with us, our laptops are pretty much the only thing that ever runs on 110. Everything else we try to have run off of USB. And this little cabinet is our spice cabinet. It's got grains and spices and tea, honey, fun stuff like that. In our roughly four years of being on the road so far, we've never had a toilet, so we automatically we're like, well, we don't need that. So we just told them not to put anything in it. So we got a blank cabinet, but our cat travels with us and that ended up being the perfect spot for her litter box. Uh, we cut a hole in it, her litter box lives in there and we labeled it poop deck. So down here, um, this does look like a regular bench, um, but it is actually under here. It is our entire power management system. It's really nice. It's all laid out here. It's super organized. And so in the event that we ever need access to it, it's all here. We have a diagram what everything is, which is nice if you didn't build it. So you know what everything is. And then in the back of it, our water tank is centered, which is pretty amazing and kind of rare with some of these builds that the water is always centered. You don't have to worry about counterbalancing your water. Starting with this side of our cabinetry, um, this is our water and power monitor. We can turn our water pump on and off if need be. This is our hot water heater switch so we can turn it on, heat up water, which is really nice when it's cold outside, need to shower or something like that. Uh, this is our utensil drawer. Um, and it's great, all of these cabinets lock into place. Down here, this is kind of just, I call it the void. Uh, it is just a massive cabinet underneath here. It also is the ha like houses our water pump and some electrical stuff. But under here we keep toiletries, oils, coffee mugs, things like that, a whole bunch of stuff. Then this is our solar monitor. So we can just track how much we have in our batteries, how much our solar is bringing in. It's great to keep tabs on everything, um, especially being that we require a lot of power for work. And in here, this is going to be more just like eating kitchen, kitchen type stuff. So cutting boards, plates, bowls, cups, storage containers. And this is our refrigerator. It's a stand up refrigerator. It's not that big. That's why we eat mostly fresh produce and stuff. It doesn't have to live in here. So this is like beer, dates, the special stuff the essentials for day-to-day -day life. And then down below, so we have our kettle, our pour over, our cast iron skillet, our pot, tin foil, and four wine glasses. So if we didn't have this, I genuinely have no idea where any of these things would go. So we ensured that this drawer was a part of our build. So this is the top of our kitchen. We have a sink, and we have a two burner propane stove. Because of our hot water heater, we can get hot water to the sink. All of our cooking, we love that when none of these appliances are needed, you can just close them and then you get a fully operational counter. I like to stand and work. So a lot of the time I work here. Our trash can is actually a airtight cereal container. We have found that if we don't have something that seals, and we again get into like a hairy off-road scenario, our trash will be everywhere. Um, so we found this to be really great because it's airtight, 
it seals and then we just fill them with uh, little biodegradable trash bags. So hack right there. It's like one of my favorites. Now facing the back of the camper, we have this awesome window, which we really love. Whenever we pull up to a camp spot that's got a beautiful view, we always try to point our butt towards it so we can look out this window. So this is quite possibly the most versatile space within the camper. This is currently our desk slash kitchen nook, eating area, um, dining room, what have you. Uh, but this also becomes a bed. Uh, which is great when we have guests uh, they can sleep here but then this is also our indoor shower so this is the shower grate this table goes away this is our water hookup and there is a shower curtain that hooks into the hooks on the ceiling up above us and just forms a little tube that you flip underneath this grate and it funnels all the water into here and then out the side and into our gray water tank. The other great thing about this bedding area is it's also our biggest storage area. So underneath each of these bench seats is storage all the way to the bottom of the camper. And then underneath this one is more work equipment. We've got medical supplies. It's kind of a pain because you do have to like move everything out of the way to get to the bottom of this compartment, but the stuff that we store all the way at the bottom is the lesser used items, but the storage base is absolutely invaluable. I feel like when you have a limited amount of time in a place, it accelerates your desire to digest it and to see and get to know it as much as humanly possible. Being out on the road and always being surrounded by strangers for the most part has made me open up more as a person and again and again I'm surprised by the generosity of strangers and the kindness of these people that we meet. It's probably the number one thing that I take away from travel now. We can feel at home anywhere. As long as we're together and happy, what else do you really need other than that? You go through the highs and the lows of travel and inherently going through adversity always strengthens your relationship, whether it's with your partner or friends or anything like that. I think that you just get a greater resolve and you learn to work together, live together in tight spaces, whatever that entails. It's important to work together and I feel like if you can work better with your significant other, like you can just like approach everyone in your life with more understanding and conflicts just become less of an issue all around. YouTube is a recent thing that we've started doing. We initially did it to start the documenting process of rebuilding the Sun Raider and restoring it, hopefully inspire people to do their own projects. And So much knowledge has been gifted to us that the driving force on making YouTube videos is to give back to the people that we can't really give back to. Whatever you have, it doesn't have to be fancy or flashy or expensive, just go. Because if you, will, if you wait for everything to be perfect, it's just never gonna happen. Fall in love with the lifestyle and adventure and figure out what is important to you and what's not so that you don't spend a ton of money and realize that you didn't need to in the first place. If it's something that you're feeling an interest in or a pull towards, there's probably a reason for it. We're only here for a little bit of time, so you gotta make the most of it. Our Instagram account just is kind of, it's always been just making sure my mom knows we're not dead. The time that we sold, uh-oh. Oh my God, we have a runaway can. Can you go get that? I, I smashed my yeah. Oh my God, all of our stuff is blowing away. Oh, shit. oh God, sorry. Garlic burp. <laughs> we'll actually put it in the windshield like a visor and it keeps our cab cooler and it's collecting power. Love it. So, life on the road is so hard. How do you manage? No, you kind of uh, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's one of the bloopers for sure. Uh, it's the pizza I ate for breakfast. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. <laughs>